When you think of Michael Jordan, the first things you probably think about are his freakish athleticism, incredible footwork, and his killer mindset in clutch situations. However, if you were to think of Michael Jordan as a GM, we could describe him with one word, pathetic. There may be a harsher word to use, but today we're gonna be nice. I just don't understand how a player who dominated in the way that he did could do such a poor job at making decisions within the organization that could lead to wins. I mean, for crying out loud, the man literally won six NBA titles. So you would think if there was a person who knew the secret to winning, it would be him, right? Well, apparently not. In the 17 seasons since Jordan joined the organization, Charlotte has only had a positive win-loss record four times. And of those, they made it to the playoffs only three of them, losing in the first round on each occasion. It really just doesn't get any worse than that. Out of all NBA teams, no one is on a longer streak of not making the playoffs than the Hornets. Their last playoff appearance came in 2016. Yeah, you heard that correctly, 2016. They haven't been to the playoffs in nearly 10 years. But how in the hell is that possible? What exactly went wrong? Well, for starters, Jordan has the worst draft pick track record in NBA history. First, he drafted Michael Kidd Gilchrist over Bradley Beal and Damian Lillard, then selected Cody Zeller ahead of Steven Adams, Giannis, and Rudy Gobert. And it doesn't stop there, though, because he also chose Noah Vonley over Zach Levine, Frank Kaminsky over Devin Booker, and Malik Monk over Bam Adebayo and Donovan Mitchell. But thankfully for the Hornets franchise, Jordan's time as the majority owner in Charlotte came to an end recently, after he sold the team for approximately $3 billion to Gabe Plotkin and Rick Schnall. In part of Jordan's farewell speech, he said this, The opportunity to be the majority owner of the Charlotte Hornets in my home state of North Carolina for the past 13 years has been a tremendous honor. I'm proud of all that the organization accomplished, the exciting on-court moments, the return of the Hornets' name, Charlotte hosting the 2019 NBA All-Star Game, and HSE becoming a true pillar of this community. Yeah, I'm not really sure what he means by saying he's proud of all that the organization has accomplished, but that doesn't matter. What does matter is that the Charlotte Hornets could potentially be back in business this upcoming season. And it all starts with the head of the snake, LaMelo Ball. Last season, he was limited to just 36 games due to three serious ankle injuries. He sprained his right ankle twice, then fractured it on February 27th, ending a season. In Ball's first practice since the injury, he was recently seen wearing two protective ankle braces. It's also said that he wears them pretty much at all times when training, whether that be in his normal practice routine or playing pickup basketball. Like Steph Curry, I think it's safe to assume Ball will be wearing these braces for the remainder of his career. The Hornets are expecting him to be fully recovered by the start of the season. However, Ball is still trying to make sure everything is perfect conditioning-wise before he's confident enough to step back on the hardwood. The 22-year-old is already an all-star point guard. In those 36 games he played, he averaged 23 points, 6 rebounds, and 8 assists per game while shooting 41% from the field, 37% from three, and 83% from the free throw line. When healthy, he's a top 10 point guard, and there's no doubt about that. His court vision and ability to read defenses is way beyond his years. Even the impressive eight assists per game doesn't really show the magnitude of his true ability to pass the ball. He's someone who could easily average 10 or 11 assists if his teammates pick up the slack scoring and shooting the basketball. And while he isn't a natural scorer, he can still score at all three levels at a pretty high level. He has one of the better floaters in the league as well, and standing at nearly six foot eight gives him a major advantage on this shot as well. Defensively, he's actually not as terrible as a lot of people assume. He averaged 1.3 steals per game last season after averaging 1.6 his first two seasons in the NBA. And while I know steals aren't the best way to judge defense, it does show he's pretty active on that end for the most part. Ball has good hands and great length to be really good as a team defender and in the passing lane. When Hornets head coach Steve Clifford was asked about LaMelo Ball this summer, defense was something he said he noticed LaMelo was improving at. He was making really good progress in a lot of ways with this pick and roll game, which is critical for us. His defense and everything, his game management. We had a stretch of under 200 minutes of play last season where it was LaMelo, Mark Williams, PJ Washington, Terry Rozier, and I think with anybody else. And they were second in the NBA in net rating. That goes to show how much progress LaMelo has made with his team defense, transition defense, pick and roll defense, all of those things. Ball's backcourt partner, Terry Rozier, is coming off arguably the best season of his career. While he did average a career-high 21 points throughout 63 games, his efficiency wasn't nearly as up to par as previous years. This was mostly due to his increased role and usage rate. After LaMelo went down, he was counted on to do all of the scoring. That's definitely his specialty, 
but just not as the number one option on a team. He shot an insane 19 field goals per game last season. He's usually around 15 to 16 the past few seasons. He also shot his lowest three-point percentage since 2016. With Lamelo coming back, he can now sit back and pick his spots a lot more without the need of feeling like he has to force everything. Ball and Rozier definitely are far from the best defensive backcourt. However, neither of them are necessarily bad individually. Now let's take a look at their forwards, starting with their rookie, Brandon Miller. Miller has a game very complimentary to LaMelo. He thrives in a more off-ball role with playmakers setting him up in both the mid-range and three-point line. The Hornets were 27th in points per game last year. They desperately needed Miller to go get buckets. He's capable of averaging 13 to 15 points, which is a great bar to set for a number two overall pick. Although it was just the summer league, he's shown the ability to score on all three levels. And his overall offensive bag looks extremely promising. Defensively, he's got good size and length. If he can play with a high motor on defense, that'll not only turn his personal game up a few notches, but the team as well. So yeah, he's important but maybe not as important as their other forward, Miles Bridges. He's going to miss the first 10 games of the year following his suspension from last year, where he did not play a single game. There will be rust for sure. However, at just 25 years old, we can expect he's improved on the court while he's been out. Before the suspension, he was on the verge of being an all-star, averaging 20 points and 7 rebounds while shooting 49% from the field and 33% from three. His athleticism and inside presence was among the best, not to mention his transition scoring was elite when he and LaMelo shared the floor. So having LaMelo, Rozier, Miller, and Bridges as your scores looks nice on paper, but until Bridges' suspension is up, his starting role will be taken by P.J. Washington. As of recently, P.J.'s been more known for his off-court game rather than his on-court game, shooting his shots in all of the wrong places, if you know what I mean. But who can blame him when her name is Brittany Renner? Jeez. Okay, let's stay focused now, fellas. While P.J. shot his lowest scoring percentage of his career, he still had a good season with all things considered. Without ball or bridges, he had to take more shots than usual, shooting by far his career high in field goals with 13 per game. Now we can really focus on being a solid stretch for off the bench. He will be depended on heavily to make Charlotte a bigger threat from beyond the arc. I just personally love what he brings to the table, a perfect backup behind Miles. At the center spot, the Hornets have found a center they should never let go of, no matter what. That player is Mark Williams. The 21-year-old is a physical phenom, standing at seven feet tall with an enormous seven foot seven wingspan. He's a gifted shot blocker who's already borderline elite at making rotations and switching out onto the perimeter, which was definitely his most impressive feat in his rookie year. With the Hornets being so shaky defensively, he may just be the savior of this team. His rebounding will also be huge. He was averaging seven rebounds in just 19 minutes. So now, with his minutes increasing, the Hornets may be even higher than they were last season, which was ninth. Then off the bench, they still have Gordon Hayward, though he's one of the more unreliable players on the roster. Saying he's injury prone is an understatement. He hasn't played over 70 games since 2018, and he's just 33 years old. He played just 59 games last season due to shoulder, hamstring, and thumb injuries. Even with that being said, he provides great spark from the bench, still more than capable of putting up 14 points per game. The rest of Charlotte's bench is kind of all over the place. They have Kai Jones and JT Thor who have potential, but they're still pretty raw and struggle with off-the-court issues as of late, especially Kai Jones. They actually do have a really good backup center in Nick Richards, who can catch lobs and protect the rim with the best of them coming off the bench. They also have young guys like Bryce McGowan, and Nick Smith Jr., who could develop into solid players moving forward. It's clear, though, that the Hornets' strength is in their starting five. Now, will they make the playoffs? Most likely not. But my point is, they are finally on the right track, which is something Hornets fans haven't heard in maybe ever. But what do you think? Can you see the Hornets making the playoffs within at least the next few seasons? Let us know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.